back, back from a break. Uh, aloha. Uh, so, is anyone still around? Uh, I've been away for four days, uh, taking a bit of a bougie break in a pretty bougie place, which was uh, a, a very nice, uh, just an hour or so outside of Melbourne. In fact, just past Geelong on the... Uh, I suppose it's Bellarine Peninsula near Queenscliff. Anyway, a good time was had. Lots of decadence with decadent lunches and dinners. Um, uh, and I quite enjoyed myself and had some very clean, fresh country air driving back into the city. By the time sort of reached the uh, sort of western suburbs of Melbourne, particularly started to get a bit bumper to bumper to coming towards the west gate. Uh, just noticing, oh, no, all I'm smelling is car exhaust. And um, for four days, I had this wonderful, clean country air. And it's very fresh, like it's, uh, I guess, unseasonably cool in uh, Melbourne and surrounds. Uh, it's often quite hot this time of year. But we're getting a little bit of a break from that at uh, the moment. Uh, what's the weather's? Only around 20, then it's getting up to 28 and back to 20. So, you know, it's all good in the hood. Is it musical aviator? It was the night before Gladys would announce it is Christmas. Would they get together or stay home alone? Would children meet grandma or game in their room? Would sound to see Sydney or get the fuck out? Uh, yeah. Look, I reckon the numbers tomorrow tell the story. Uh, I've seen some people who I think think they are insightful getting quite um, conspiratorial and suggesting that uh, Gladys and gang are actually uh, lying about the numbers. And I think that's quite silly because it would take too many people to... Um, maintain the lie that sort of thing is uh basically impossible to do straight up lying is very hard to do so um i think they're telling the truth about the numbers they've done a massive number of tests which is excellent and uh, the numbers might be low enough to say, uh, well, uh, most people are okay. Uh, the, the various hotspots, notably the Northern beaches should be well and truly fucking locked down, uh, um, until, uh, the uh, uh, outbreak is completely contained. Uh, and I would not blame other states for still saying, no, until you actually have this shit eradicated, uh, we don't want people traveling from New South Wales to here. Um, huge amount of variables, though. Huge amount of uh, variables. So uh, it, it, it's very hard to say what's uh, going to happen. Oh, okay, yeah, Raiders. Okay, fudging numbers, Florida's method. Somehow they've gotten away with that. That's a real thing uh, that the Republican governor of Florida is straight up lying and straight up suppressing the true statistics uh, of COVID in Florida, which is mind-blowing. Like that's a known thing. People know he's doing it. And somehow he's getting away with it. And uh, the scientist who um, uh, left her job because of the pressure she was put under to hide the real numbers uh, continued to publicize the real numbers from her home. And so the fucking piece of shit governor of Florida sent the cops to raid her house and literally shove guns in uh, uh, her family's faces all for the crime of embarrassing the filthy lying piece of shit governor of Florida. That was, that was fucking wild. That was some of the most corrupt shit 
I've seen. That was wild. <clears throat> He's good to have you. are busy shopping. Just got home. Quick change of plans. Oh, you got a flight voucher refund from Jetstar. You were going to be in Sydney, but not now. Yeah. <clears throat> it's amazing. Just like this shit turns on a uh, fucking hairpin. Uh, oh, that whole Sydney outbreak. I was thinking like, I feel like we're paying for our hubris. We're all busy congratulating ourselves. Look, no community cases. It's great. And then a breakdown in the quarantine process and lo and behold, uh, goes undetected for, it seems like a couple of weeks and then pa-pam and, um, uh, you've suddenly got a lot of cases, um, a lot of questions as to whether, uh, the, um, and New South Wales government is doing enough. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Certainly the next couple of days will tell the story. Helian, hello, Kirsten. Ooh, and, and weren't the folk at Antha um, Distillery uh, happy to hear I was there on your recommendation, Kirsten? And... Uh, I, th I think they think the only reason you think they're so nice is uh, uh, because you match each other in drinking. So that was fun. But yes, I, I had my four days away and I did two uh, tastings of uh, gin distilleries in the area where I was. Uh, and uh, so, yes. Uh, and I brought back some cherry gin from Antha because uh, it is irresistible. It's like their version of slow gin. Um, and from, where is it? It's just here, actually. I'll show you what I got. Oh, came back with more gin than I left with. Uh, so. Anthers cherry gin, which as you can see is very dark red, lovely taste. Um, and uh, from uh, uh, the Bellarine distillery, Teddy and the Fox, this is like their citrusy gin. And I got this because this was the most different. Um, it's got really distinct citrus flavors. Um, I think. That will make a good martini with a twist of lemon. Uh, yes, Raiders DeSantis is a terrible Trump sycophant. And Mr. Gavity has Trump and all his sycophants are fucking insane. It's really hard to know. Like, has it, it, it's, it's, it's like Trump is obviously pulling uh, a massive grift. It's a massive. Um, rip off of the morons who were stupid enough to send him money. And yeah, I'm basically okay with that. It's like, oh no, the, those people are stupid enough to send you money, then fucking take their money, man. Jesus, what are you going to do? Let the suckers keep their money? <laughs> I think not. And um, so, uh, yeah, that that whole thing with Trump blows my fucking mind. Uh, you get real notes of sherbet off the teddy. Well... Let's crack it. Let's crack it open and I'll have another taste. What's the, is there a thing that makes it? Yeah, there it is. Little plastic seal on here and there's a the little dotted line bit that makes it theoretically, theoretically, I stress, easier to open. Fine. Fuck you. I think I've got a knife here. That's got lasagna on it. I don't really want to open my gin with a lasagna knife. Let me get a little knife out of here. All right, let's try again. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, point the sharp bit away from yourself, dickhead. Ugh. The struggle to open a new bottle. Ah, oh, that's what I want. All right, come on, let's get let's get this shit happening. All right. Do 
neat little logo burnt into their cork. We just gave it, he nearly went flying on Sunday. Four blokes in the plane, seatbelts on. Drop the key. Needed a licensed mechanic to unscrew the pedals, remove them, unscrew the floor, pick up the key from the... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a disaster. Damn. Uh, yeah, Raiders, I thought that was really interesting that Attorney General Barr was literally refusing to do what Trump wanted. And he'd been doing stupid shit Trump wanted. and But it's just like, yeah, no, dude, you're almost out of power and you're fucking insane, not doing your dumb shit anymore. All right, I'm going to try Teddy and the Fox. Ugh. You know what? I'm going to use this one because it's really... It's meant to be a measuring glass and all the measurement things washed off it, which sucks balls because um, it's a neat, kind of neat thing. But I can use it as a tasting glass because it's very wide open so I can get some good aroma happening. So open the Teddy and the Fox for the first time. Oh, it's got, it's really citrusy on the nose. I quite liked basically all the gins uh, I tried. Um, but the ones I bought were the ones that were most different to other gins. I want to, yes, uh, Kirsten, the Charismatica, the one that they don't sell to the public, that was in the tasting. And... Yeah, it was probably my favourite of the Anther gins, actually. Mm. Like, this is... This is the most citrusy gin I've ever had, I think. Like, real serious lemon oil action. Uh, and that's why I got it, because... Uh, it's different to the other ones. Like uh, uh, the tastings at Teddy and the Fox thing was their standard one. <laughs> I think that they're like, this is this is the gin for people who don't really like gin, and I can see why they say that actually. Um, uh, oh, what they have? But I know I had the Navy Strength uh, uh, one from Bellarine, and they had this neat little setup with they paired it with tonics, and uh, so you have a sip of it straight. See what that reminds you of, and. Um, then make a little mini G and T with it, and uh, the Navy strength was a Navy strength. It was like I, th I think the thing is like four times the juniper in it, um, which is like the main flavoring agent of uh, gin. You have to have juniper in it to call it gin, and um, <laughs> sort of sip the Navy strength, the overproof one. It's like whoa, yep, okay, yep, 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 yep. That's overproof, um, and then. Did it with a bit of gin. I think it was the Mediterranean uh, gin from uh, Fever Tree, and uh, and brought you bring the glass up, drink, and because it's got so much juniper in it, still this real um, strong uh, juniper gin smell as it comes up. But uh, the tonic really tamed the um, the the navy strength gin. Um, it was actually great with tonic. Um, I think it'd be good in a martini too, a bit of dry vermouth. <coughs> Guessing you've got bottle 155 of 159 of an anther gin called Habitat. It's your favourite. Dev and Amy came around your house and squealed with joy. Mm. Uh, yes, they... Uh, their experiments are interesting. I had a fun chat about the um, the cherry one. I think it's in uh, uh, January and cherries are ripe. They have a big uh, cherry pitting session. And my guide for the tasting said uh, it looks like the set of Dexter when they're doing it because the cherry juice everywhere just looks like a massive crime scene, which sounds like fun, actually. But, uh, yeah. Ah, so that habitat was from botanicals grown 
on a Bank of a Melbourne building in the middle of CBD, but they are going to make a Geelong version because um, they're also up there in Geelong now. Mm, nice. Yes. Sorry, sorry, going back to the politics, right? Is that thing Barty when Trump said he wanted a special investigation into electoral fraud and Hunter Biden and Barr just went, not, not doing that, you fucking clown. There is uh, no um, electoral fraud. And I think there's basically uh, nothing about Hunter Biden we don't know. Certainly nothing that's uh, relevant to uh, um, a Biden presidency. I mean, fucking look into Hunter Biden, though. He's fucking hilarious. He is a massive crackhead. Uh, like he grifted his way into the Navy, I think, through contacts. And um, he should have got kicked out sooner than he did. But I believe he failed multiple drug tests before getting kicked out. And again, that was because of his family and other contacts. And um, he's a massive crackhead. Also, absolute pants man. Um, he loves the sex. And yes, there are uh, from his personal hard drive. There are definitely photos and videos of him banging everyone, and um, include not that there's video or photos of this, but he did have sex with his dead brother's widow, which is fuck. Okay, dude, there is some shit going on there. There is absolutely some shit going on there that you banged your dead brother's widow. Um, um, there's, there, there's comforting, uh, and then there's comforting. So, oh my God, this, this cherry one though, is so easy to drink on its own. Um, oh, I have to think of the right drink to mix with that one. Oh, it's, it's really good. Um, I know, I will look up uh, slow gin cocktail because this is their version of a slow gin, basically. Gin fizz is fucking weak as piss. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, four classic slow gin cocktail recipes. Oh, I'm also not working at the moment. First week of get the fuck, come on. Slow gin fizz. Yeah, it's fucking fizzy drink. So the Blackthorn, slow gin, dry gin, sweet. That's what I thought a sweet vermouth would go with that. And I've got my awesome sweet vermouth from Unico. Um, so slow gin, a dry gin, vermouth, bit of, oh, fucking, I'm doing that one, the Blackthorn. Just go think what dry gin to go with the anther cherry though. Or the Charlie Chaplin, slow gin, lime juice, apricot. I don't think I have apricot brandy. Um, or the modern cocktail, a peaty Scottish whiskey, a slow gin, dash of absinthe. That also sounds good. That also sounds good. God damn. I'll try that one. Says that user a, a peaty scotch, which I do have in from my little um, sample pack. I have two peaty Johnny Walkers, and I know scotch snobs would snub their noses at me um, for having Johnny Walker, but you know, it's fucking, it's for what it is. Slummoth. <laughs> Slummoth is on Twitch is just about the Carlton draft or well, fuck your mother. Well, I don't know. Carlton draft and inbreeding kind of feel like they go hand in hand to me. Annette, hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to work out what the, oh, to bless. I'm trying to work out what the emote was. Because um, it's tiny and I am an old man with bad eyesight. So I have to uh, look closely. Um, oof. Stella, I agree. I'm just putting it in a friggin' cocktail. 
So why would I use an expensive one? This is Johnny Walker. And good evening to you too. Uh, Kirsten, what dry jeans? Which ones qualify as dry? I've, I've obviously got the Teddy and the Fox I was just showing off. I've got Applewood Coral, Applewood Finger Lime. I've got the Christmas Sample Pack from uh, Tiny Bear. I've got, I've still got some of the Brogan's Way Navy Strength. And I've got uh, the Archie Rose Navy Strength. I think that's all the gins I have. Slumoth, um, I do not know where Aidsy is at the moment. I may hear from him. I've been away for four days, so he um, uh, may not know I'm back. Um, but don't hear from him tonight. I'll probably hit him oop tomorrow and uh, see what is what. And what he's up to, if he's still in Canberra, or I think he is still in Canberra. He's staying there past Christmas. That that would make sense if he's gone to Canberra, be there with his family um, uh, Christmas. Slumoth, you've been on a farkin bender. Um, uh, I was pretty restrained. I mean, I did do those gin tastings, and I did uh, take some pre-made cocktails with me. And I was at the my favourite cider place, the Flying Brick, um, to do a tasting of the various ciders there. Um, definitely my favourite sparkling cider um, made by uh, Flying Brick in more well, past Geelong. Um, there is a cider I've had which comes from New South Wales, comes from uh, Orange, which is across the mountains west of Sydney where they grow, famously grow a lot of apples and there had been wineries around there for a while when, you know, 10 years ago, cider started to get popular. Uh, they branched off into cider and um, I think it's called Small Acres and they actually make a non-sparkling cider that I think is fantastic, which I was really surprised by. I thought non-sparkling cider, mm, I don't know, um, and it's really good. They do sparkling cider as well. They, they, they spell their cider with a Y. Cute. Yes, I'm over 18. Ooh, they have a cellar door these days. It's a long way away. I have a, ooh, Australia's most successful. Geez, they've got a big range now. Most successful small producer. Um, our range. What is your range, guys? It seems like a lot. The cat's pajamas. Only made in years when the fruit's at its absolute best. State grown cider for variety apples. Complexity through fermentation on solids, followed by malolactic fermentation. These stirring 24 months maturation. Ooh, method traditionnel sparkling cider, hand riddled and disgorged. It's a labor of love. So 35 bucks a bottle, 750 ml bottle of cider. That's a serious, it's done. So that's done champagne style, obviously. Uh, pom I don't even know what that's. They've squealed the writing. Pomo, a Normandy style aperitif that you would in French. Oak barrels, soft, mellow apple fruitiness, mature toffee apple on the palate. Hmm. Best served as an aperitif with soft cheeses or as a digestif with baked apple tart. Damn. Then there's the sparkling. Sparkling peri, pear cider, out of stock. Some set still out of stock. It's like they've stopped making it. Saying it's a dry one and Norfolk out of stock. Medium and Abscato style produced in Brittany, France. So that sounds like the sweets. So they've stopped making it. And now they do little bottles as well, which they never did last time I looked. 
Wow, they're fucking out of stock of fucking everything, which speaks to both success and uh, not great planning. <clears throat> so, um, well, that's interesting. I don't know what they're up to, but um, yeah, there's one or two bottle shops around here that used to carry it, but by the looks of it, they won't now because it's not about. I do actually have a uh, French um, cider with a champagne style cork in it that I bought for New Year's Eve two years ago, three years ago, and I still haven't opened it. Like, because I don't know, Mrs. Angry went to bed before midnight, and so I didn't pop the cork. Um, so uh, it's it's still here. Maybe this year. Maybe this is its year. Who knows? Not sure if it improves or worsens or stays the same. But I think the idea is once the stuff's in the bottle, it doesn't really change that much. But I do not know. I am certainly no expert. I don't know. Don't know what's happening there. Hmm. Uh, So I think another one I'm going to make with this one, the Teddy and the Fox, because of its citrus notes. Um, well, we also got this special honey waterway. There were two locally produced honeys there. Um, so I think I'm going to make a honey syrup um, uh, from one or both of the honeys. Um, and... Uh, yeah, Mrs. Angry's been having problems with heartburn, so she's steering clear of uh, uh, anything that might cause heartburn. So that's anything acidic, given how a lot of cocktails are acidic because they tend to have uh, citrus juice in them. Lots and lots of cocktails have the citrus juice in them. Uh, so she's been largely uh, avoiding cocktails, although she did enjoy just a, a little glass of uh, the anther cherry on the rocks. It's... And that's it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so drinkable, that one. Um, but I was thinking of making her a version of Bee's Knees, which is uh, traditionally it's it's pretty simple. It's uh, um, gin, lemon juice, and honey syrup. And for her, because the citrus is a bad thing at the moment, I was going to leave out the lemon juice. And because this... Uh, gin already has a really noticeable uh, uh, citrus on the palate. It's going to do that, honey syrup, and do a spritz of lemon over the top, just spritz the lemon oil over the top and put the peel in, and that would give the lemon aroma. So that would uh, that would be a good approximation of a bee's knees without actually putting lemon juice in it. And I don't have any lemons. I'm going to have to go. What's the day? Tuesday. Well, it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday's Christmas. Oh, gonna have to go to the supermarket tomorrow and get some citrus so I can have some peel and I the juice as well um, uh, for for resisting and making things. Uh, so um, that seems like a thing to do. Oh, I have to uh, uh, save uh, a lemon or a lime uh, for, for resisting because that's the thing I do. We've been very creative with um, keeping things going with products with things I have, uh, like squeezing all the citrus for juice for drinks, not just for cocktails. I actually like putting uh, uh, a spritz of lemon juice or lime juice in a Pepsi Max. I think that's really nice. Um, and so I often do that. Um, but then you got like all the peels. So you can get some additional use um peeling the uh, lemons and limes and whatever else is um before you juice them uh and uh then you have this fun process it's called uh, making an oleo saccharum which is uh oil and sugar um that's the citrus oil um you just thin peel all the uh, uh citrus you don't want much of the pith the white stuff under the peel um, and then you cover them in sugar, uh, like caster sugar is best because it's fine and really gets in there. And uh, uh, it uh, le the sugar leaches all the moisture out. So it leaches all the oils out of the citrus peel and turns into a 
really goopy syrup and then you add a bit of well, water to that so it's uh, a bit runnier and uh uh the um you have this really zesty sugar syrup then Sunbear, you discovered lime goes fucking awesome with peanut butter. I'm intrigued as to exactly how you do that. Do you just like squeeze a little bit of lime juice on top of peanut butter on bread? Because I'm I'm intrigued. I like the sound of that. Justin, hey, how are you going uh, in this exciting almost Christmas time of the year? Is it exciting? No, oh, it's exciting. Yeah. But it's a time, it exists, and we exist in it. So <laughs> you're in Queensland. Got to remember the time differences. Uh, yes. Uh, what's the saying? Set the clocks back an hour and society back 20 years. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, uh, uh. We don't actually have Abigail here with her soundboard because she can do <laughs> the rim shot when we make terrible jokes. Oh, somebody, so that's it. So you literally like put peanut butter on bread or toast and drip a little bit of lime juice on it. Okay. That sounds like something I'm actually going to have to try. It sounds fantastic. So um, um, I'll, I'll have to look into that with either uh, peanut butter or or, or cashew butter or something. I'm not that into peanut butter. I kind of prefer, like, uh, I've got expensive taste, I guess. I like cashew butter or macadamia butter. But um, I'm very intrigued. Have you tried, is, is it better on, on bread, like a sandwich, or toast? Or does, have you not tried both, or does it not matter? Uh, any of those things. So, um, but uh, you've certainly got me intrigued. It's certainly something uh, I want to uh, look at. Um, like experimenting with flavors, basically. Uh, it's a, a, a bit of fun. Uh, it's one of the big reasons I'm um, in, into uh, cocktails, experimenting with the flavors. You know, the added bonus of getting drunk. Uh, but uh, uh, I find... It, uh, more interesting flavor. Like if I had to choose between something that wasn't going to get me particularly drunk, but had an interesting combination of flavors over something that was sort of boring or one note or just really sugary, but really high alcohol, I'd take the lower alcohol one with the interesting flavors. Ha <laughs> ha! Sunday, you just stuck your finger in the jar and licked some lime. The the randomness of that is spectacular. I love it. Justin, you made it here just before border checks came in. Drove from Canberra via Dubbo to avoid Sydney. Good idea. Good idea. Um, I've done that uh, trip from Melbourne to Brisbane up the middle uh, through Dubbo. Uh, yes, it's a long way. It is a long way. And... Um, that's a weird thing. When you get to Brisbane, it's like it takes a long time to get there, and that's just the start of Queensland. Like there's another fucking 12 hours of driving north if you really feel so so disposed. Sunbear, that is classy AF. Um, I'm, I'm just loving the image of uh, got a lime in one hand, cut in half, open jar of peanut butter, Mmm. Yeah. Uh, mmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. I just, just as an image, I really like that. Um, <laughs> the 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 circumstance. Was that a drunk thing? Were you sober? Um, I'm trying to think of the circumstances that um, you're there with uh, open peanut butter jar and uh, a, a lime ready to go. Um, that seems like a really unique set of circumstances to me. Um, I'm not judging. I'm completely on board. I'm completely supportive. Uh, and, 
You know what? I think I'll hit Aidsy up. He he might be disappointed if I don't. So I will actually prompt him. He may he may not be available. Um but he might be, and he might appreciate if I remind him that I'm back. Be fun to say hello to him. Uh, let's have a look. For it's a man in my contact list. It auto corrects, auto completes. I should say. Just enough to Christmas, you're going to drive all the way down to Melbourne. That's a big assumption, man. That the borders are open. Um, yeah, that is a bit. Yeah, you're going to have to drive down the middle again. Don't drive down the coast. Um, you will absolutely get pinged if you drive down the coast. Um, next couple of days will tell. It's real fucking hard to know what is actually uh going to happen so sunbeam you've been sober af for decades well you just have an interesting outlook on life then uh, uh and and two thumbs up for that quite honestly uh suffer does beer go good with nuts it's certainly traditional it's very traditional uh for pubs to have a little bowl of nuts um to go with a beer uh, uh, I'm not a beer drinker, so I'm not the best person to answer that for you, but I'm going based on evidence. It is quite traditional to pair beer with salty nuts. So, uh, I'd say you're on safe ground. If you're having a beer and snacking on some nuts, that seems like safe ground to me. Um, so, uh, I think a lot of people like, uh, salty nuts with, uh, whiskey as well, which is not something I've really done. Uh, but it's basically, it's bar food, you know, something, something very salty, possibly greasy at a, a bar to go with your beverage. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen musically over here. Friends want to go to see the Get on the Beers Christmas Lights Happens King Park. I did see the video. Um, for those who don't know, this is a story in three parts, basically. Uh, Dan Andrews, Victorian Premier, uh, and his various press conferences um, uh, used the phrase that some people found quite amusing and charming about. Uh, having the freedom to go out and be with your friends uh, and get on the beers. Yes, Blue, you saw the mysterious fridge gremlin. Fridge ninja, fridge troll. Um, the mysterious fridge uh, ninja uh, was briefly uh, back, maybe back later again. Um, so, um, yeah, so the story in three parts. Dan Andrews, various press conferences, various things, including reference to getting on the beers. Uh, somebody... Uh, did like a dance remix of a whole bunch of things Dan Andrews had said, including get on the beers, and people found that mildly amusing. Now, someone has done a set of Christmas lights, including a thing that you can put words on that matches this music. I think they play this music um, uh, and the words are get on the beers, and it's all timed in sequence with this, sort of uh which is almost like a dubstep remix of uh dan andrews saying get on the beers and other things uh and it is quite amusing i have seen the video of it um uh and uh it is quite amusing so yes that's 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 the three parts part one is dan andrews saying various things including getting on the beers part two is someone doing a dance remix of it and part three is someone coordinating their Christmas lights with the dance remix. It's pretty funny, honestly. Sajuk, good evening. Safi, you got a 70-minute delay past Albury. Vic checkpoint, got on the train with Donga. Madness, riding Vic on Friday. Yeah, it's the border is going to be fucked for a while. Um, yeah, Ned, I'm sure you'd be able to find it. I saw it on uh, uh, Twitter, um, but... 
it's it's got to be doing the rounds um i'm not sure what you'd search on uh you know dan okay i'll i'll, I'll try it right now i'll just do a search on dan andrews it on the beers christmas lights yes comes up straight away so yes if you do that search dan andrews get on the beer christmas lights uh you'll find it it's pretty easy i'm not going to put it up in case i get fucking copyright hassle from youtube uh i don't know what's the person's performing name who did it it's um it's got a fun dj name um mashed and Coochers, Mash, Mashed and Coocher. Um, fun, fun remix, very fun set of Christmas lights. <laughs> Safi, you're not going to miss Christmas with your mum's pudding. Excellent. Music label, I don't know if it's on YouTube, but yeah, it, I saw it on Twitter and it's on a lot of websites. So yeah, if you do that search, um, you will absolutely find it. So um, uh, yes, I find it quite funny myself. Um, the fact that someone coordinated their Christmas lights with like this dubstep rave remix of um, uh, Dan Andrews is fucking funny. So very Australian, in my opinion, uh, that little effort. Oh, trying to think. Do I have a theme for next week's cocktails or or actually just make drinks based on what I got on my holiday? So it would be like gin week. Um, uh, 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 so I wonder... What does Diffords say for next week? So what's Monday next week? The 28th. Dun, 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 20. Actually, I'll start on Sunday, the 27th. What's Sunday? London's Great Fog. Well, that's weird. On December 27th, 1813, a mysterious thick fog smelling of coal tower blanketed uh, London, basically cutting visibility down to zero, and it wouldn't clear until the new year. Uh, it was, yes, it was industrial pollution. There you go. Peter Pan's anniversary. No, oh, it was originally a stage play. There you go. Star Wars opened in the UK. Okay, that's not really doing it for me. Any of those? Yeah, so for you, a lot of isolation in recent months. So, yes, you got locked up alone for four months. Fucking hell, man. Uh, yeah, two months, then a couple of weeks off, then two months. Yep, yep. Um, good that you're getting to have a family Christmas. That is uh, a good turn of events, Safa, definitely. It's on the 28th. Childermas. What is Childermas? Santos Inocentes. The day when Herod supposedly massacred the innocent children and Spain's answer to our own April Fool's Day. On Dia de los Santos Innocentes, Day of the Holy Innocents, Spanish press and TV feature made-up stories. Uh, kids play pranks. That's fascinating. On the anniversary of the biblical story of King Herod uh, massacring children that he feared were the messiah um spain have turned it into the equivalent of april fool's day 
which is honestly my sense of humor is pretty dark but that is um dark as fuck quite honestly probably make a very spanish drink for if it's spanish prank day it's not a fucking merry-go-round martini it's a starry night what the fuck fix your fucking links diffids merry around martini what's a merry-go-round martini gin and vermouth and vermouth oh okay you split dry vermouth and sweet vermouth fascinating Ooh, chocolate day national chocolate day um speaking as a fat bastard uh i can get to national uh, uh things so we're we gonna have christmas eve drinks new year's eve drinks look probably man i'm not going anywhere i'm not a- <laughs> I have so little interest in going out on New Year's Eve. Um, uh, so I probably will be at home and I probably will do a stream. Yes. Oh, yes. The the conjunction. Saturn and Jupiter kissing. Music later. Yes. Uh, everyone's been very excited about that. Uh, yes, I did see people calling it the Christmas star as well, just because there was that very bright star in the sky and it's near Christmas. So what's a chocolate Sazerac? I'm intrigued. It is bourbon, creme de cacao. Fuck, I might do that. Chocolate day. I love a Sazerac. Bourbon and creme de cacao. Splash of absinthe. Yes, yes, indeed, yes. I might do that. I might make a chocolate Sazerac for um, chocolate day. Yes, yeah, so if you couldn't see the planets because it was raining last night, night before, got a good view of it. Annette, you found a coronavirus test. Not allowed out till you get your results. Hopefully they'll get your results straight away, like tomorrow. Um, uh, But uh, yes, I saw that you were having trouble uh, finding where to get tested uh, in Melbourne, but um, good on you for persevering. The anniversary of Piero the Unfortunate. (laughs) Oh my God, that sucks. Piero the Unfortunate was the oldest son of Lorenzo the Magnificent. They were both from the Medicis. Um, Why was he unfortunate? His personality, he was a spoiled, petulant teenager whose arrogance alienated his wife, his cousins, and the city of Florence, so much so that even small children threw stones at him after he gave the city to the French. When not backing coups or dabbling with the sort of Machiavellian power players who could eat him alive, Piero enjoyed drinking, gambling, and plotting revenge on his enemies. Fancy having a dad called Lorenzo the Magnificent and you get known as Piero the Unfortunate. That fucking sucks. Sunbear, what, 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 what do you find funny about the name Vermouth? Uh, yeah, so for Sydney's been doing very well with the tests. So if the numbers are low-ish tomorrow after the fucking mammoth amount of testing being done, start to have a little bit of, and I mean a little bit, a little bit of confidence that Sydney are actually managing the um, outbreak. Uh be a couple i'd I'd want to see right through to the end of the week um numbers getting lower to be confident they'd really got it but new south wales has a great track record uh with managing outbreaks um and them not getting out of control so this one looked scary as fuck uh but maintaining a positive outlook uh that they will maintain their record and keep this one under control so uh 
Go Sydney. Annette, you were a bit sensitive in the nasal cavities, but it wasn't as bad as the first one you had in May. Well, that's okay then. Raiders, right, you think there's a permanent test site at St. Vincent's Hospital, if anyone else is looking. Um, fortunately, I've not developed... God, that's the thing with being isolated from people all year. I haven't even had a fucking cold. It's great. Uh, it's awesome. Oh, it's not, but that's cool. You don't need to know everything, but vermouth. Does it seem like mouth to you? Um, I could see that um, being a bit weird. Apparently in... Uh, not sure if it's the original language, but certainly in another european language it's called vermit and like v r m i t um but yes um yeah but i've never had a test done because i've never been in contact with anyone who tested positive and i've never had any actually no I've, at various times you know i've woken up phlegmy and whatnot but it's always gone away but yeah like i've, I've never i think that's just me sleeping with my mouth i've been Oh my, oh my god, my fucking throat. What's wrong with my throat? And then I have a drink of water and I'm okay. Uh, but um, yeah, going through winter without even getting a cold. Fucking awesome. So um, I am very much uh, 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 in favor of that side of things. There's obviously a huge fucking downside. Uh, with uh, the lockdowns and the isolation and the separation been very, very, very hard for a lot of people. It has definitely sucked. Personally, I've done quite well. And I try not to gloat too much about that, but uh, it is uh, a true thing that I've done quite well. Oh, shit, what's he saying? Years ago, some family came back to Melbourne after visiting Northern Beaches, spread it to staff at Gundagai, isolating in Mooney Valley someplace. Jesus. I did see, yes, um, the uh, um, Vic Health is tying themselves in knots to say we have no cases here. So now they're saying they've d developed a new category. They'd already had no locally acquired cases, uh, only cases of people who'd come back from overseas and were in quarantine. Um, and New South Wales had already been doing that for months. But now uh, they've invented uh, a case acquired interstate. So it's still not a locally acquired state. And it is a, an important statistical differentiation, but it's a little bit funny to me. Um, I was the unexpected bonus because, you know, we get up to, we said we, we can get up to a thousand deaths from flu in a normal year. And we had fucking none because just at the start of flu season, which looked, like it was actually going to be bad. The initial incidence of influenza was higher than normal. And then we went into lockdown, the isolation and just normal influenza cases just disappeared. Hey, trouble. Hey. Oh my God, I saw that Raiders. Donut Dick Tim uh, in Sydney. And again, he won't fucking leave. And he made himself look like a fucking fool again. A week before this outbreak in Sydney, he's um, uh, uh, out in Sydney indulging in a bit of um, uh, friendly cuddling uh, with his mate. And so, well, Sydney's great. It's normal. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> And then, of course, they have this outbreak a week later, so he looks like an absolute fucking cunt as normal. That guy's so fucking shit. Um, he's just made himself look like such a piece of shit repeatedly. Um, he's just fucking oblivious, that guy. He used to do New South Wales Rego in New South Wales Rego in Albury. <laughs> I guess I can remember. Is New South Wales Rego cheaper than the Victorian? Uh, pff, uh, yeah, I have no idea. I'm assuming you're saying New South Wales is um, uh, uh, cheaper than Victoria. Um, right, so I could do a chocolate. Sazerac next week. 
I like that. Christ, Piero, Piero the Unfortunate is um, fucking hilarious as a story. I love it. Never really knew much about the Medicis. I knew they existed, of course. Nanotech. So we're having a gin atomic. Ooh, what's a gin atomic? Basil leaves, or basil, as Americans like to say, gin, elderflower, lemon juice, lemon bitters, tonic water. So it's a highball. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh. Could make it nuclear by doing fucking, 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 fucking Navy strength. Uh... Sydney Hobart race disaster. They cancelled the Sydney Hobart this uh, year because uh, of the Sydney outbreak. Tasmania said you can't actually come here. So Royal Bermuda Yacht Club at Daiquiri. Rum, falernum, curacao, and lime. Hmm. I could do that to laugh at the rich fucks who don't get their stupid fucking boat race. Jude Law's birthday. Equal Pay Act came in in the UK. That's kind of boring. That's pretty well. International Bacon Day. Oh, I've just made a Benton's old fashioned. God damn it. A bacon garnished martini. What is all? Oh, Rasputin. The day when British burned buffalo. I was in the 1813 war. Oh, they destroyed the city of Buffalo. I didn't know that. Um, my history knowledge is not that good. Thank you for the Gesundheit, Toronto Maple Leaf. -er. Well, Kirsten, you've been helping with customer service humans this week. Friendly reminder, it's OzPost that shits. Oh, yeah, I've got a people blaming you for stuff taking a while. That sucks. Uh, even like um, uh, one of the orders I made from Applewood in Adelaide took a long time to get. It took a couple of weeks to get here, and I'd been giving them a bit of leeway, but I thought, okay, this is actually a long time. Um, so I emailed them very politely and said, um, Osbo's blah, 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 blah. Uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, the order's not lost because it was a limited edition that I was ordering and I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing out. And they checked and they said, no, you were doing different. And the good news was it was already in Melbourne by the time I checked. And I think it arrived a couple of days after that. But the idea of, um, abusing customer service people because deliveries are bad is, um, yeah. I mean, mind you, I wanted to have a fucking go. I, I ordered this stuff from uh, JB and their initial thing was saying like, yeah, you'll get this in two days. And I'm like, cool. Week later, I hadn't heard anything. And so I emailed them and said, why haven't I heard anything? And they didn't reply to that email and I kind of forgot. And a week later again, I remembered and said, okay, not only do I not have it, no one replied to my request a week ago to what the fuck is happening. And they said, oh, sorry, we're really busy, blah, 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 and it's been dispatched tomorrow. And it's like, okay, um, I did want to point out, it's super fucking obvious you guys had actually forgotten my order um, and you just looked it up when I complained and went, oh, fuck. And um, they uh, they didn't acknowledge it. They just said, oh, no, it's definitely coming. I'll be to you in two days. And it did. So it's like, okay, no, dudes, it's super obvious. 
you had actually lost my order. And um, yeah, so I, I, I kind of want to make it clear to them, I fucking know you lost my order. And then the fucking delivery guy, um, it, it came in three different packages and one arrived, that's fine. They left it, you know, the door, they might've rung the doorbell and I left there. Um, then one arrived while I was away, but there were people here, my offspring were here and I get this stupid message saying, uh, you weren't there to sign for it. So it's at this depot, which is fortunately just up the road, but it's like, A, bullshit. There was someone home. B, why didn't you just fucking leave it? Everyone else does. Um, and then C, I got the third part today and they just dropped it at the door. And it's just like, that's what I wanted you to do. So what the fuck? It's like you are at the whim of individual delivery drivers, which is fucking annoying. Um, but yeah. So is it cheaper to get alcohol post or go to dance? It's cheaper to pick it up in person because uh, even the the cheapest deliveries, you know, it's going to add up to $10 to the bill. Although interestingly, um, uh, Dan's act as like a conduit for a bunch of suppliers and you're not necessarily doing these suppliers a favor when you do it but sometimes when you order off the dan's website they say you can't get this in store you can only get it delivered um because it comes direct from the supplier so if you make one order that's got this stuff coming from multiple suppliers you only get one delivery fee so that's cheaper so there you go Oh, my God. Guy calls you an arsehole today. I said, fair call, but your misplaced eye is going to make me angry. It's going to make us less likely to help you, more likely to hang out. Yeah, no, that is that is absolutely not on. Um, uh, that guy's the arsehole. Um, uh, like, uh, uh, I have um, oh, I have this problem with Microsoft Windows at the moment, and I got someone from there support center to call me a guy who's clearly in India and he had some weird fucking setup where I was hearing an echo of everything I said two seconds later, which was really off putting. Uh, and, um, uh, um, and he was just reading off this script and I said, you're not answering the question. That's not helpful. And he just kept repeating it. And it got to the stage, I didn't shout, but I really directly said, stop saying that. Do not say it again. You know, I want to make a formal complaint. Uh, yes, Kirsten, I know exactly doing that thing and only getting the one delivery fee is actually screwing over the small suppliers. I actually know that. And sometimes I've been mean enough to do it. Um, normally, uh, I... Uh, order direct from the suppliers, but a couple of times. Also because what usually only when one or two of them, it's actually very difficult to order off off their site to order directly. There's been one or two where it's been very hard to order apart from through Dan's. But like well, I've been getting stuff from uh uh Applewood or um uh Brookies or even um, uh, uh, Starwood uh, or Marionette. And so I've been ordering direct through him. <laughs> the one exception with Starwood was when uh, uh, Dan's had the um, Nova for 30 bucks off. And I was like, fucking hell. And I know that means um starwood were actually losing money off the sale but i'm sorry i couldn't resist i couldn't resist safa facebook track everything you do i get so many booze ads because i clicked on a couple of booze ads so but sometimes i like the things they advertise to me so that's okay Raiders, did I see Mark Roper's Glitter Bomb video? I saw that he posted one, and I know in the past he has faked those videos, and so I didn't bother watching it because I know he faked the previous ones, as in uh, the the products were not uh, actually stolen by people. He got people to be the person who opened the 
package with the glitter bomb in it. So I don't know what's in the new one, uh, but I do know he faked the videos in the past. Because for those who are unaware of it, this guy's saying, like, oh, you know, I was getting like Amazon packages delivered and people were stealing them off my front step. So I came up with a revenge plan where I had this glitter bomb in the box and there was like a GoPro in there that um, would record when um, the person opened the box and this uh, glitter bomb would go off and basically just spray glitter all over the place. So um, it was kind of like uh, uh, a, uh, you know, they didn't steal an Amazon uh, thing for real and B, they had this enormous inconvenience of glitter everywhere. You know, and it's like, ha, 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 ha. But it was fake because he had the GoPro in there and it was like, well, they would have got a really expensive GoPro if you'd done that. Um, and how do you get the footage off the GoPros? And I know some of them uh, can transmit the video by Wi-Fi. So if you were tracking where the stolen uh, stolen package went, you could technically follow it and maybe download remotely from the camera. But basically, he was lying. The videos were staged and it was... Um, friends of his who were opening the packages and looking all shocked on the GoPro footage when the, the glitter bomb went off. So I didn't watch his newest one because I like, faked him in the past. I just assume he's faking it again. So for, are there Boxing day, day sales for booze? Probably. i tell you what I'm going to look out for uh, is um, the big brands do gift packs for Christmas and uh, they of course don't all get sold and so they tend to go on quite a discount after Christmas so you get you get a double barreled um, saving one is the booze in the gift pack is usually cheaper than buying the booze along alone and the second bit is you get a gift pack there's usually something extra in there like, um, cool glassware or something. So that's what I keep an eye out for post-Christmas um, gift packs that have been discounted. Like actually, oh, I forget where it is, must be up there, the little um, gift pack of scotch whiskey I got to use for cocktails. Um, those things tend to go on a pretty good special um, after Christmas I'm looking out for them because you can get some quite high-end whiskeys, like little things of high-end whiskey, but at a good price. And it's fun to have them as a one-off in a drink. Ah, Kirsten, thank you for the tip. Keep eyes peeled for Boxing Day deals from a certain New South Wales distillery. Nice, nice. Oh, I tell you what, if it's on special, uh, the white rye, just from a cocktail point of view, uh, the first time I saw um, uh, Archie Rose's white rye, I'm like, oh, I think I want that. Yeah. Toronto Maple, if today's going to be insane, Ontario's going into full lock. Holy shit, really? You're going into full lockdown for 28 days, starting at 12.01 on Boxing Day. Oish. I hope it works, man. I hope it works. I worry that it's too little too late. What's the nature of the full lockdown? Like, what are you allowed to leave the house for? Like, in the strictest lockdown in Melbourne, we were allowed to go out once a day for essentials. Like, uh, one person from the household was allowed to go to the supermarket for, like, you're allowed to be out for one hour a day. Uh uh, there were still places you could get takeaway from. Like when New Zealand did their big lockdown, they shut down even takeaway places. We didn't shut down takeaway. Um, you could still get takeaway from a lot of places. Uh, you could go to the supermarket for one hour a day. Uh, and we actually had a curfew. I'm not sure if New Zealand had a curfew, uh, but we had a curfew. Um so that's, I think that's when I started doing the live streams, not long before the curfew came in. Because then I was laughing. The curfew started at 8 p.m. And I was starting to live stream at uh, 
um, a, it's like, what? The sirens are warning. Dan Andrews' fascist enforcers are dragging people off the streets. Uh, yeah, I, I, that was kind of obvious. It's supposed to be 1201 Christmas Eve, but yeah, they're giving people Christmas. Yeah, which will be a super spreader event. So that's awesome. That's what I worried about the outbreak in Sydney around Christmas. It's going to be a super spreader event. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, continuing my quest. Are there any good themes for next week? December 30th. Do, 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 do. New Year's Eve. An East India cocktail. It's also the founding of the East India Company. Festivus. What's an East India cocktail? It's cognac, curacao, pineapple juice, syrup, and bitters. Hmm. Hmm. So like a variation on a sidecar. A pineapple -y. Pineapple-y variation on a sidecar. Hmm, that could be good, actually. A mantini. Gin and a half shot of beer. Gross, okay? Fucking gross. A nutty Russian. Vodka and hazelnut liqueur. And Mr. Black coffee liqueur. Wellses. Everyone's into the Mr. Black coffee liqueur these days, and I don't like coffee. January 01. New Year's Day. Oh, it gives a bloody, like okay, a yeah, bloody Mary for a uh, hangover cure. Or a hair of the dog. What's in a hair of the dog? Orange blossom honey, scotch, and cream. Hmm. That is a weird drink. I've got some cream liqueur. Cream's boring. I do with cream liqueur. Hmm. It's possible. Stella. Okay. Stella, a theme for your birthday. Stella, uh, Stella birthday. I'm also thinking of streetcar named Desire. From the Stella. Uh, okay, yeah, Toronto Maple Leaf. The freezing outside will help with the people not going out, I guess. Central businesses are open, selling groceries, everything's closed. Restaurants doing takeout delivery. Yeah. Sounds quite similar to ours. Kirsten, which one did you think sounded delicious? Um, there's always a delay between when I see a co uh, comment and when you made it. I got some orange blossom honey. Stir honey with scotch until honey dissolves. That sounds like a bit of a fucking challenge, quite honestly. I actually just got some orange blossom. Maybe I should make a hair of the dog for New Year's Day. That's actually pretty good. And instead of single cream, I maybe use a cream liqueur just for funsies. Ah, Mr. Black and Nut Liqueur. Yes, the Nutty Russian. Um, yeah, I just don't like coffee, though. I was thinking there's a Mr. Black cocktail competition at the moment uh um but i don't like coffee i don't want to pay for a whole bottle of mr black liqueur that i'm not gonna fucking drink i was gonna make a milk clarified uh mr black espresso martini because i have done that before and i kind of like that um because it took out the nastiness of coffee that i don't like 
But in order to do that, I'd have to buy a fucking bottle of Mr. Black. And um, that seems expensive for one cocktail for trying to, you know, enter a competition that I probably wouldn't win. So, yeah. Mr. Black. Cool brew. Is like $43 at Liquor Land. That's interesting. Liquor Land's cheaper than Dan Murphy, according to this. So, Mr. Black. Yes, I'm of legal drinking age. Shop, Mr. Black. 60 bucks. 60 bucks direct from Mr. Black. How many would you like? Uh, I've seen smaller ones. Coffee Amaro, Colombia. Ugh. So, wait, what was that? 60 bucks. So, what's so cheap at Liquorland? 500 mils, $42. Okay, it's 500 mils versus 700 mils. 55.99 at Dan's and 60 bucks direct from Mr. Black. I still 42 bucks is expensive. Oh my god. Sorry, I was looking at ads and speaking of cold brew, it's AZ. Yes, in Melbourne. Some of the cold coldest brew you can fucking have. See? And uh, I've got it now. I've got it now. And I hope that you um, play my ads long after I'm dead too. Like they, good, the, good. They got. Um, good. I'll do you a series of ads. And, um, I like that. You can uh, just fucking play them and don't worry about the royalties. Because uh, yeah. my estate will go, uh, I don't know, I'm pissed. And we will be good. Yeah. So, how are you? What's going on? Yeah, it's all good. We're just talking about this Mr. Black's coffee liquor. You'd probably like that, actually. Uh, a, a very special Australian uh, coffee liqueur that's taking the world by storm. I probably would like a coffee liqueur. I'm a uh, bit of a coffee. Uh, You're a bit of a coffee. Yeah. Well, look, maybe I'll, I'll, drinking, yeah. maybe I'll get you some. Here I go. Here I go. It's yeah. Coffee. Get you some as a Christmas present and just steal enough to make a cocktail to enter yeah. this cocktail competition. I'd say do that. I'd say do that. Okay. That's actually a um, good plan. It's a good plan because um, the drugs I was going to get tonight fell through. Bummer. Um, bummer, bummer, bummer. Which uh, is desperately disappointing. Um, and I'm... Um, excuse me. Sorry, I said, what the hell was that? That's not in my world. I've got the only microwave in the world that chucks a hissy fit if you yeah. leave it, um, if you leave uh, food on for too long. What's this a call? Okay. My one will beep repeatedly and annoyingly. But it won't um, do that thing that, ooh, what are you doing there? I'm just moving cords around because I've obviously taken the um, iPad to uh, um, um, to, um, to do things to it. Yeah. And, uh, well, to do this this very broadcast. Yes. And to learn how to um, make shortcuts um, in the iPad. And I've, um, I've hit a snag. 
but I, 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 I am sure that I can um, overcome snag. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, <clears throat> one of these is there you go. Now I'm going to um, here we go. Um, All right. My uh, hands, uh, because that's what all people do um, when they um, when they uh, eat. Uh, okay. In Melbourne, uh, but not in Sydney, because in Sydney, um, what they do is they uh, hang shit on Melbourne for months and months and months. Yeah. And they have an outbreak. Um, yes. When I got off the plane, I was fucking harassed um, by the department of, of someone, human services, to show them my ID. That's not strong enough. That's not fucking yeah. really strong enough. This is fucking Barclay Square faggerism. I'm going to go and get the good stuff. Hang on. Fuck. Um. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that sounds like a palaver. And anyway, so I fucking had to get in there. And you'd think they'd fucking be given a bit of beep, beep, beep with the fucking, you know, um, heat guns. No. Where do you live? Have you got ID? Now, the trouble is I don't have any fucking ID. I've got yeah. um, an old passport that's out of date. That's better. <sighs> There's alcohol right in there. Yeah. Um, and you, I've got a healthcare card. So yeah. They basically said, have you got anything with your address on it? No, healthcare card's got my address on it. So um, they went, oh, he's a local, you can go. And then two more of them tried to stop me. I said, I got checked. I've already been checked. Oh. checked. And um, I got out of there. And they, um, um, Effectively wrestled this guy to the ground because he was from <laughs> Sydney. He did, as, they, didn't as him. they just like, surrounded him in a loving way, going, yeah. You're going to be um, in um, quarantine for fucking about eight months. And yeah. um, there was this Chinese kids who were going um, on their way to uh, Brisbane. Uh, until they found out that they weren't going on. No, to Hobart they were going. Until they found out they weren't going to Hobart at all. They were going to a hotel <laughs> for two weeks um, to fucking um, quarantine. Yeah. And I laughed at that because I'm mean... uh, Yeah. Well, there was, there was a, a few things apparently um, like – people coming and they're, they're like from the fucking northern beaches of sydney yeah. and they just tried to fly into melbourne yeah. and everyone's getting their id checked and it's like you're in the fucking red zone what are you doing and they're like oh we're just there uh, you're in hotel quarantine for two weeks that's your fucking christmas and new year motherfucker yeah um well happy new year prick yeah um Enjoy the fireworks from your from your non fucking windowed um, hotel room. Yeah, exactly. Oh, everyone's going. Stella thought that beep was a washing machine. Toronto Maple Leaf thought it was his his smoke alarm. <laughs> so I thought it was something. It's it was it was a very piercing sound. I thought it was something here as well. So um, no, no, it's it's a horrible sound, and it yeah. it's it's chucks a hissy fit. It literally chucks a hissy fit if you don't take the food out that it's cooked. It's like I've done all this work cooking food and I beeped five times and you did nothing for a minute and a half. So <laughs> I'm just going to beep and beep yeah. and beep and yeah. stamp my little microwaves. Yeah. And they are little. They're like 10 centimetres. Yeah. No, they're one centimetre. Um, they're like one centimetre. And um, I'm going to step out of the microwave and um, beep more. And then go, yes, yes. Sorry, darling, I'll get the food out. Yeah. That's uh, fair. Hey, do you know what? To, you know how I'm always looking for is today the anniversary of anything? Yeah. Today is a, a fun, well, there's a few things. 
but today's a fun anniversary. Well, it wasn't very fun. It, uh, during the Battle of the Bulge, um, the German counteroffensive to the Allies' invasion, uh, which almost worked. It was it terrifying. Really did actually almost worked. It's like everyone they, thinks, they had not, not everyone. They yeah. could have fucking maybe made it happen. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone thinks, but with, you know, my shitty history knowledge, I thought for a while it was basically D Day, then the war was over. And it's like, no, no, no. D Day was the beginning of the end, but it dragged on for a really long time. Uh, there was one Allied operation that failed miserably, and could, Operation Market Garden failed miserably, and things could have gone real fucking bad there. And then the German counteroffensive, generally known as Battle of the Bulge, um, nearly fucking worked. Um, and this is the anniversary of when the Germans had surrounded Bastogne uh, that had American forces in there. And this features very prominently in the absolutely stunning mini series that you should watch called Band of Brothers. Um, it's like 10 years. 10 years old now, but really oh, watch. Oh, man, it stands up, though. It it's, stands up. Yeah, it follows Charlie Company, who were part of the invasion force, and it's largely factual because and a the, bunch of members the, of Charlie Company show a lot. Colonel. Yeah, yeah. A bunch, a bunch of the members of Charlie Company are still alive and were interviewed for the series, and you actually mm. see interviews with them at the start of some episodes. But um, they were one of the groups who were surrounded in Bastogne. It was the middle of fucking winter. They're trying to dig foxholes in ground that's frozen solid. And there's snow everywhere. And they're surrounded. They're outnumbered. They're almost out of supplies. Then fortunately it cleared a bit and they got supplies dropped. But anyway, so they're surrounded and the Germans are getting really frustrated with how they won't give up. And um, I'll, I'll actually read the quote. It's the anniversary of this. Uh, so by the 21st, the Germans had surrounded Bastogne. Uh, uh, on the 22nd, um, despite determined German attacks, the perimeter held, the German commander requested Bastogne's surrender. Uh, when the acting commander of the 101st, Brigadier General Anthony McAuliffe, was told of the Nazi demand to surrender in frustration, he responded, nuts and then he turned to other issues and after a while um his officer said oh you actually still have to reply to the german who said we should surrender and another officer uh lieutenant colonel harry kinnard noted that the initial reply would be tough to beat so mccauliffe wrote on the paper and it was typed up and delivered to the germans the line he'd made f famous and a morale boost to his troop Nuts. That was the sole response to the German demand for surrender. And that reply had to be explained both to the Germans mm. and to non-American allies. They were like, I'm 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 sorry, but what what does that mean? And what you're like, talking about? To you. Yeah, he thought bull, it was unofficially yeah, to go fuck yourself. Um and uh if the British had done it, they would have said bollocks. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, but the, um, yeah, it's the anniversary of him sending that one word reply to the Germans who had surrounded Bastogne, uh, just nuts, which they didn't understand. And uh, a day or two later, I think, very soon after, Patton's armoured division came ploughing through. Mm -hmm. Although the fun thing in Band of Brothers, um, because they were holding, and the Germans could not break their lines no matter how much they fucking tried, um, uh, Patton's armoured division came storming through and uh, broke the siege. Uh, the funny thing they say in Band of Brothers is to this day, uh, the members of Charlie Company say, we never needed Patton. <laughs> it's just like... Because Patton was doing his crazy gung-ho shit. Uh, well, again, he, he wanted to get to Paris first. And when oh, he, he was ordered he was to go... When he was ordered to go and fucking um, relieve Bastogne, he was yeah. fucking furious. Yeah. He was because of, of what he did in this. Slowed him down. And yeah. so he said to his um, adjutants, get me the fucking plan 
for um, relieving Bastogne. And because Patton was famous for having a battle plan for every contingency, like everything. Mm-hmm. If there, and then he, what he would do was he'd go, here's the whole wall, here's um, theatres of the wall, here's yeah. the theatre I'm in now. Um, yeah. This is the history of the theatre so far, and these are the twenty or so contingencies that could happen. Yeah, and um, he would send his staff out to plan um, the logistics and the um, the 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 fighting style of each of these contingencies so he's ordered to go and relieve bastogne this was partly because monty um was clearly being beaten to paris by Patton, and monty was chucking a shit fit yeah um Patton had already pissed off monty in italy doing exactly that. Like there was a political thing where they were setting up Monty's do- following this route to the target. I don't know if it was Rome or whatever, but it was, it's, you know, Monty's going to be the one to reach the point of liberation. And Patton's going, but I could get there first. And go, no, but you're not. You're on here. And his route was much longer than Monty's. And he just went to his guys, we go real fucking fast. We could beat him. And they're like, we might encounter resistance. And he's going, they're fucking Italians. What are they going to do? And so he he stormed ahead and actually reached the target before Monty, which was politically very embarrassing. So that's what, yeah, he had been put into the middle of fucking nowhere in Europe um, to avoid that. And that thing with him, Bastogne, he, exactly what you said with him doing the, think 10 moves ahead he, he talked to his guys and said what's likely to happen oh after they think about it for a week they'll tell you to liberate Bastogne how long will it take us to get there four days and he's going okay but we're free to move now right how about if we go blah 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 and and they spend a couple of days getting everything ready and then the allied commander said how soon can you go and he goes tomorrow and they're like tomorrow. what you know, I moved all my And this was it. He, he had his 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 genius was logistics. Yeah, he surrounded yeah. himself with staff officers that knew logistics backwards, and yes. he never ran out of fuel. He never ran out of coats. He never ran out of boots. He never ran out of fucking parts. <clears throat> he never ran out of fucking vehicles. Um, he would calculate how many vehicles would get destroyed and then fucking order in yeah. um, that many, um, yeah. even when they weren't destroyed. But they would be sitting yeah. there waiting. And But what he would also do is he would place things forward. He would go and send a small force forward taking a shitload of supplies. Um, At one point, the Germans um, found... No, it wasn't Germans. Yes, it was the Germans. It was in um, Sicily. Um, Found one of his forward fucking supply dumps and went, Jesus, someone's left us a shitload of petrol and um, food and um, stuff. And uh, (laughs) I was going, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they got caught taking it. Yeah. Uh, so not so cool. Oh, um, sorry. I just want to say hi to Abigail as well. Yes, I'm back. Got back to and Aidsy's back as well. Aidsy's back in Mel. I thought you were probably staying in Canberra for Christmas or something. Okay. Is that a sore so spot? No, here it is. Here it is. We were supposed to go to Canberra for Christmas this year. Yes. And, so, and boss the house. Boss of the house has just started a new job. Yeah. He didn't want to get caught in Dad, fucking order, yep, no shrewd order shenanigans mm. that might have mm. occurred. Uh, and because none of none of this shit in Sydney had happened when he was thinking of this. He didn't want to get caught in any border shenanigans that might occur while he just started a new job. 
he wanted to keep this fucking job. So he said, I am not going to camp for Christmas. Um, I'm going to spend Christmas with the folks. And so I said, well, I will obviously spend Christmas and New Year with you because you are um, <clears throat> the guy. But uh, my folks needed to see a 3D version of me in Canberra at some point. And the idea was we were going to get all the brothers together, but one of them lives in Sydney <clears throat> um, yeah. and couldn't couldn't get out. He, he did it about when he was coming and he couldn't get out. Um, anyway, so we... We had the obligatory family lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, all was well. Um, all was well. No, I mean, that's, you know, that's smart. That is honestly smart. The, of Avoiding the threat to your employment because of changing circumstances. Sucks, but it's smart. It's definitely a smart thing to do. Well, I mean, I could go anyway because I, I could take this. Yeah. I did. I fucking, you saw me fucking. Yeah. I did a fucking live stream from Canberra. You know, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't impossible to do. I mean, yeah. I could go to Cathedral Goodgy and as long as they had good Wi Fi, I could fucking mm. do the thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the way we've got it set up, except for one project, which we've got to talk about, um, we don't have to be there. Um, yeah. So, it was okay for me if I got caught. You know, it sucks to be me. Yeah, because it happened then. Um, negotiate with the OCT health system to supply me with a shitload of drugs and methadone, which they don't. Yeah. Um, and um, I have to get doctors here in Melbourne to agree to it. And oh, fuck, this would have been a nightmare. Yeah. Um, which is why I overdid the um, logistics supply run before I went. Ah, uh-huh. okay. Yep. Um, however. However. Turns out. Um, that. Um, the logistics supply run ran out today. Um, now, it's a good thing that tomorrow everyone's open, but I was supposed to go in today and pick up some medicine that I need pretty bad. Yeah. And they said, no, no. Um, it's tomorrow. And I've gone, oh, fuck. Are you kidding me? Because what happened was I got, I'm trying to make this as fast as I can, okay? Um, I get three days supply of this medicine. Yes. Because I was going to Canberra, I needed six days' supply of the medicine because yes. I had to take six days' supply of other medicine that I'm on. Yeah. And I was only going to be there four days. Mm. Right? Yes. Um, unfortunately, um, when we reviewed the plane tickets, it turned out that I was going to be there for... Um, five days. Yeah. And so the six days ran out today um, just as I got home. Happily, there was no fuck-ups because I had no buffer and I had no fucking room to move. Um, if anything fucked up, I would have had to have had a phone growing out my ear um, tomorrow. And... Um, talking to various different people um, and trying to um, 
trying to borrow a system which is adamantly opposed to uh, outsiders taking their health money. Right, right, um, right. Hey, okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just uh, concurring, saying right. Mm. So that would have been very difficult to do. Oh no, I've done it before. I have actually done it before. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky in a sense that I'm not your traditional junkie. Yeah. What do you mean, fucking darling, you fucking can't. <laughs> you, 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 you are a oh, very well mannered junkie. Fucking... You're, a, you're an incredibly well mannered junkie. You, you're a fucking dog, mate. Fucking hell, you can't get away from this fucking darling. <laughs> Oh, I fucking need it. Oh, I really mean, know. I can't be fucking selling. Oh, I fucking actually fucking need it. So I can do my fucking job of selling fucking coke. Um, I'm a very polite junkie. You are. And uh, when, I get on, when I get on the phone to um, the Minister of A City Health, I'm awfully polite and collegial and friendly. And they're delighted to talk to me. Um, first time I ever tried it, because I've done it twice now, first time I ever tried it, I was put on hold for two hours, then one hour, then three hours. Um, and it was, it was effectively because the minister didn't want to talk to me. <clears throat> All right. Minister didn't want to talk to a fucking junkie. I was like, fuck off, I've got anything to do. I don't want to talk to this prick from Melbourne. This is just fucking ridiculous. Anyway, um, somebody said this guy's held on for eight hours. Um, yeah, you know he's he's persistent uh, and he hasn't abused anyone mm. when we've said you've no. got to stay on hold because I, I I got transferred a few times. You know, yeah, and. As I was getting transferred, I was getting closer and closer and closer. <laughs> so I went, just, yeah, there's people who run departments, they've got things to do and they don't want to talk to a junkie. I get it. So I was doing fucking stokers and, and checking out <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I had a phone on one ear. And um, I was really, really, really lucky because the landline in Canberra at that time was still running. They don't have a landline there anymore. Um, they um, only use their mobile phones, like here in Casa del Aze, um, which is called uh, Yukio, actually. Um, and um, fucking, yeah, so I was lucky I wasn't on a fucking mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! Like another time. Um, <laughs> uh, oh dear! Jesus, I had no idea. Anyway, I had no idea that was happening. Um, I just, I had no idea how bad it was, and then yeah. the world found out. <laughs> yeah. And when and when we found out, I just thought, I just if there was a hole now that was little mm. enough, I could crawl into it and die. <laughs> but I can't. Yeah. I'm really three D, and I'm really fucking here. Yeah. I'm really fucking going. And I thought, and I thought to myself. There is nothing I can say. There is nothing I can do to make this better. I'm just going, like, shit. Anyway, so happily I was on the landline. Yeah. <laughs> and I was using my phone to watch anime and fucking yeah. do Sudoku's. And um, at one point I went, oh, yes, yeah, sweet champion of the world. And this woman's going, uh, excuse me, what? And I said, oh, I just nailed the Sudoku. You have no idea. Um, firstly, there was madness because there was uh, two nines in the top row. But no, no, that was soon gone uh, because my eagle eye detected um, that this was not going to work. But, uh, oh, yeah, I think you're fine. I think you're fine, uh, Sudoku champion. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not what you want to talk to me about. And she said, how fast did you do it? And I said, no, it took me an hour. And she said, what level? And I said, you know. And, um, she shat herself laughing. Oh and, dear! Um, 
He said, all right, uh, so you're apparently AZ and women. Yes, apparently I am. Apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just grabbing something over here. Okay, I have physical evidence. And then she's gone, okay, so what do you need? And I've, I've said my story again. And um, she's gone, oh, that might be tricky. You have to talk to the minister. And I said, yeah, well, I'd, I'd love to. And I understand uh, she's busy. I, I get that. And I understand that um, you guys are busy too. I really appreciate that you've talked to me at all. I mean, you know, you, you didn't have to. So I, I really appreciate that you've um, you've taken the time. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really need this to happen. Um, and I really need this to, to, to work. I'm, I'm uh, here. I, I was always supposed to be here, but I uh, needed to extend my stay because of reasons. Um, and I didn't just say reasons, I said what the reasons were. And I go, oh, that's, well, that's fair enough. All right, look, you'll probably have to be at home a little bit longer. I said, I understand, I understand. So finally, this minister's been told he's been on hold for eight hours and he's been cool about it. Um, <laughs> and now I, <clears throat> I get to talk to the minister. Um, I get to talk to the Minister's Secretary and the Minister's Secretary says, we are awfully sorry for keeping you on hold all day, um, which was my big test and I knew this was coming. And I said, look, it's fine. I get that you're busy and I get that you're trying to run an entire health department. <laughs> One guy's problem is not a health department's problem. <laughs> problem i get that you're dealing with hundreds maybe a thousand or two people not just one guy who wants an extension on his own i really understand that and i just appreciate that you're talking to me at all and she's going well the minister would i'm sure will talk to you and i have fucking poured it on i mean people have seen ad pour it on before and <laughs> me. Fire hose this slag with fucking nice, and um, I wanted um, let's say eight out of ten, um, which was a big ask. Um, and she's giving me eleven out of ten, and I'm going, fuck yes, nice. I am ruler of the universe. I win. I win. And my um youngest brother who is was at the time employed by this department um uh found out that i had got 11 out of 10 and said how the fuck did you make that happen at all with this tight ass slag when she fucking cuts budgets to fucking things like palliative care. You know, how can you cut <laughs> budgets to palliative care? For fuck's sake. Oh, you know, what do you expect to get a profit out of palliative care? They're dying, for Christ's sake. And so he was going nuts in his fury about how I'd fucking nailed this fucking chick. Um... He said, how'd you do it? What did you do? And I told him the entire story. And he said, I want the quick version. I said, mate, it's not a quick version. It's a very patient and long version. I was on hold for eight hours. And he went, yeah, no, it seems like that. And I said, no, 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 buddy, buddy. What I mean is I was on hold for eight human hours. God damn <laughs> The minister didn't want to talk to a fucking junkie from Melbourne, right? Um, and he's gone, oh, of course not. Why would she want to talk to a junkie from Melbourne? Who wants a favour? That's bullshit. Who fucking needs that shit? And so I was passed around and um, eventually I fucking, you know, and, and every time a receptionist fucking picked up the phone, I fucking yeah. um, lubed her up. And uh, when she was moist enough, she handed me on. Um, oh. and then, uh, finally got to the minister and, um, and off you went, slammed at home, uh, nice. up to enough guts. Uh, nice. yeah. why did teenage boys fart so much? Um, because, it's just the thing. Uh, but yeah, it is a thing. It's um, just the thing. 
they enjoy it. Why do I fart so much? I enjoy it. Um, why do I fart what? so much? Because I have gastrointestinal yeah. difficulties. Yeah. What, why did uh, Benjamin Franklin write an essay entitled Fart Proudly? It's just a thing guys do. It's not teenagers. It is that's, absolutely that's a guy. Real, that's a real That's thing. real. He actually talked about thing. why he should do it. And in between visits you to uh, French whorehouses, he wrote an essay called Fart Proudly that includes maybe you should consume aromatic things to make your flatulence uh, more palatable to those around you. He, um, um, yeah. He, he Johnny. Did. In France, and it's a real fucking essay, and you should Google it. Um, yeah, and read it because it pisses me. Johnny um, Knox is asking if I'm wearing a spirited weight shirt. Yes, it's the soot sprites and one of the little forest spirits. Um, one of my many pop culture t shirts that came from the T Fury site, um, which I got in a random lucky dip. They, uh, yes. Yeah. They do this thing occasionally where they do T-shirts of the day, which are pretty cheap, but then occasionally it's like, well, we did print runs that weren't completely exhausted, so we've got all these odds and sods in our warehouse, so we're doing this lucky dip now, five bucks a T-shirt, but you just don't know what you're going to get. You just don't know what you're getting. Jeff, tell us your size and five bucks a T-shirt. And I, I don't think I've ever got a T-shirt I hated out of that. Yeah. Um, I got I got a bunch I would never have bought, but it's like oh no, it's still cool, it's nice. Design. This cool. this one was from Lucky Dip, and it's always popular when I wear it. I got a shit ton of Doctor Who ones because they do a which lot of Doctor Who designs, is which I love. But but T Fury is a strange place in the sense that they don't they're not the licensees of what they draw. They so they no sort what, of what they do. Things. Yeah, what they do is they basically liaise with online artists and it's normally a pop culture fusion it's normal it's almost always a fusion of two different things and i think that's where technically they say we can get around uh copyright or trademark because uh uh we are suitably changing the original and we're commenting on the original with pop culture references um, they probably run the ragged edge quite a lot. They're not the only I'd site that does it. They'd be right on the edge, but they'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, they'd be yeah. fine. But, but, so. but look, the T Fury stuff doesn't suck. And if I was the copyright holders and I saw the T Fury stuff, like the Doctor Who stuff that T Fury does is actually pretty fucking good. Yeah. And um, I saw yeah. one that you think you were wearing it was the several Doctors coming out of the TARDIS. Um, and it, it was. Didn't suck. Um, oh, I've got, I've got a lot of their T-shirts and a lot and, of the Doctor Who ones are really good. You know, so fucking, I, I can't see the BBC losing their shit over it. When well, the one thing, they never use the logos. Fucking... No, they, oh, they, they never lose the, use the logos. Um, but, they, you know, it's like, well, it's a picture of a police box. A police box is a real actual thing that exists in the world. Um, there are apparently six still in London. You, there, there, is a, there is a tour you can do of the last remaining. They're not all in London. The last remaining police boxes in the UK. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and they're the ones that are still there. They're going to keep. But they, yeah, they they were they were very much a thing when the thing first started. Um, oh, that the police boxes were literally prisons. They would yeah. like nab someone. Yeah, you could lock could someone in them. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know how, like, in the train stations in Melbourne now, they've taken all the yeah. toilets out and then they've changed them into um, um, prisons. Um, <laughs> so, done that. No. Hey? That is not a thing I'm aware of. No. Yeah, um, you know, they have. All the train station yeah. dunnies are gone. Um, except for the bigger train stations. And um, what they do now is the people with the yellow hats um, nab you, and um, if you're full of piss and bad manners, they throw you in there, lock the doors, and uh, the toilets are in there so you can go for a piss if you're... I have often thought that I should punch one of them and be arrested. Yeah, so I just can just so you can have a rest. Yeah, so I can, so I can have a slash. Um, oh. and, I, um, and I thought, 
I have thought a couple of times of doing it, but then I thought I'll get charged and yeah. then I'll go to jail and I'll get only yeah. raped and yeah. um and I um so I just I just wet my pants and let it yeah. be. Yeah. Um uh, sorry, it's all, asked... almost bedtime and I want to get a couple of things in before going. First I just wanna check if uh Kirsten is still there. But I also wanted to answer Safa's question. He's asking about police boxes. Were they as popular as the phone boxes? They were different. They were, they, it was, you know, it looked like the TARDIS and there was a little door on it that had a phone and what that would do, you turn the little thing and it would ring the local station. Uh, so either a member of the public could call for help or the Bobby on patrol could report in. Um, yeah. But they also, the Bobbies also had a key for the police box and they could in fact open it chuck someone in there and then lock the door until um, uh, the, uh, enough people could come along to um, encourage them to go down to the station, that type of thing. Um, oh, Kirsten, yeah. sorry, so I just want to ask, the conversation before about uh, a dry gin, of the gins I told you I have, what 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 most matches the description of uh, a London dry? So I've got... The two Navy strengths, the um, Archie Rose and the Brogan's Way. I've got the summer sample pack from Tiny Bear. I've got the finger lime from Applewood and the coral from Applewood. And I think that's everything I have. And Oh, plus the, the Teddy and the Fox. But I don't think that's a dry one. I think it's a citrusy one. So yes, I'm 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 just asking in your opinion, which of the ones I have on hand uh most matches uh, uh London dry. I'm just gonna um quickly uh double check. Am I forgetting anything? Uh no, those are all rums. Those are all rums. That's the team. No, I don't think I have any other gins. Those are all my gins. Uh. So it's Toronto Maple Leafer. Kind of like a taxi phone, but um, just to the police. Yeah, the old in the olden yeah. days, we had taxi phones. You could pick up a phone and it would just connect you to the taxi um, centre and you'd say where you were and they'd send a taxi. You couldn't call anyone else. Except, except, except then the taxi phones got all fancy. And you pick up the taxi phone and they say, all right, we'll send someone round to you um, soon as because they knew where you were calling from. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. And that was all very special. And uh, in Bathurst, if you were really grumpy, um, you could say, um, look, I put some money in an astronomy hog taxi and it didn't work. And they, they would just, um, the operator would just connect you to a taxi um, without fighting. Um because they knew that you didn't put any money in, but um, they just went, fucking get him a taxi and get him out of there. He's just going to call back every five fucking minutes. Um, and um, that was when phone boxes were really, really fucking popular. And I did that trick one night with a girl who was gorgeous and <laughs> um, who was just phenomenally talented and um, we were waiting for this cab and the cab's coming and then she's just turned off the bench that we were sitting on fucking hurled and the cab goes, I don't want the fare, but I need it. I don't want the fare. <laughs> I had to walk her home because um, we couldn't get a cab and she was so sorry that she couldn't get a cab and that she'd ruined it all. I mean, honey, it's okay, baby. do <laughs> anywhere. Um, and then um, things were going really, really well, really, really, really well, like crazy well. And then she just fucking broke it off. And I, and I said to her, what, 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 what? And she said, I got scared. And I said, why are you scared? Did I do something wrong? She said, no, you did everything right all the time. And oh, I was, no. And I was getting really attached. And I was, I uh, and I, and I was really thinking that this might be the one, but it, if it wasn't, then it'd just break my heart and kill me. So I just, I had, I couldn't. Uh, I self sabotage. No, 
No. no. Because there, I, I had found a person that I could really, oh, my stars, the things we did was just, <laughs> oh, my stars, oh, my. And, um, and yeah, she just stopped at night. That's just... I I was heartbroken um, for my poor penis. Um, yeah, and of course. Anyway, penis um, so yeah, uh, the reason I brought her up was the phone boxes. Um, we also had police um, phones here in Australia, but they yeah. were in train stations and bus stations and stuff like that. And you'd pick them up and go, I'm being beaten up by a gang of street toughs and require assistance. And they would say, well, we'll be round there in about half an hour. Um, and about three hours later, they'd turn up and um, put a sheet over your cold body. Um, they were fucking useless. Um, but they were good for statistics because um, they knew where the violence was. After that, um, you're always better off ringing triple O from a um, phone booth if the phone booth had not been destroyed by vandals. Um, a guy I know used to work for the GPO, you can explain that, and um, he said it would be cheaper to give everyone in Australia a free landline phone than to fix up the um, telephone boxes we have to fix up every year. Um, yeah, it'd be cheaper to run a free landline service um, than to fix up all the telephones that get broken um, out on the street. Um, but nowadays, uh, the phone boxes uh, that still exist and have fucking um, Wi-Fi in them, which just blows my mind, um, uh, are very hard to break after years and years and years and years and years and years of experience of Australians breaking phones. They've discovered a combination of um, of, of of things and techniques that are yeah. hard to fuck yeah. up, um, and they've done really well. Um, mm. I'm proud mm. of them. I'm proud. Of them. And on that uh, night, you're going to say good night. I'm going to say good night. Oh, Abigail's also just throwing in. She briefly dated a girl from Bathurst once, so there you go. That's something to bond over. Um, right, now, does anyone want to talk to me after? the show oh yeah does anyone just want to hang out and have a chat i mean i'm gonna go just to sleep tonight because i just drove back from past geelong today but i'm not working for three weeks so i might go later um other nights normally i just go late on friday and maybe saturday night um but uh you know i might what thursday's christmas eve is anyone having a by themselves christmas you can hang out you know that type of thing uh but we'll see so countdown, I'm giving you like 60 seconds to say, uh, oh, well, actually, look, what I'll do is I'll literally just put the thing in there, as the actress said to the Bosch, Bosch up. Um, it's what she that's said. My, that's what she said. Um, and uh, 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 that's interesting. Sorry, um, I, I was looking for Sarah. So um, I, you got 60 seconds. Um, oh, I think Kirsten wants to hang out. There you go. John Tom Meeple, 6 a.m. You need to get some sleep before dealing with pre lockdown madness. Toronto Maple Leafer works in retail, and uh, the area is getting hard lockdown uh, on uh, Boxing Day. So everyone's crazy. Oh. So Johnny's going to join and talk. Um, Kirsten said she was keen to hang. I'll, 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 I'll wait a minute um, because I'm the only one who can add people. So this is your and one. I'm, what about what about my what about my girlfriend? What about friend Abigail? Does she hate me? Uh, uh, I don't know, Abigail. Said Duke's there. Yeah, Cedric, hey, young, man. And um, that's it. Uh, Hi guys. Hello. Oh, we get oh, feedback from somewhere. 
Yeah, no, that, okay. that's, I don't know what that is. That, it, <coughs> Cedric settled down. I don't know if Johnny's settled down. Johnny's um, not showing us Oops, sorry, this, a picture. He's I didn't mean. The graphic. It's a neat graphic. I think he just wants to talk. Um, okay, well, I'm going to end the live yeah, stream. You've still got a minute. Um, yeah, Abigail's <laughs> existed. It's going to tell me if we're not working today. If you had, oh, this is the fun thing. You, you'd find this amusing, I think, AZ. Uh, Toronto Maple Leaf said uh, it works in a, a Mennonite Amish area, and they're all apparently refusing to wear masks and stop their socializing and services and whatnot. So, yay. Yeah, so that's the one. So, all right. So that's it. I'm, I'm going to end the broadcast now. I'm going to go off and do a couple of things before bed, and I will come back and check just in case anyone clicked the link. And then, yeah, anyone else to hang out and chat for a while can. But um, bye, everyone, on to Interwest.